So you've got, you've got two spindles, you've got three heads. It seems like there's not much this can't do. No, no, there isn't. Um, when we actually went for training, we got sort of, it, it's one of them, if you can imagine it, it can do it. At Aztec Precision, we presently machine small micro components and small turn parts for the interconnect industry. There was a demand for us to make bigger and more complicated parts and this was the reason to bring the SX38A in-house. The SX38 gives us a bigger capacity. Before we had a 32mm capacity, we now have a 42mm capacity. It allows us to do longer parts, more complex parts, and is a more flexible machine than what we had before. How new is this to you and how was it to learn? Um, it was a steep learning curve, should we say. Um, having three paths rather than the two has made it quite difficult, but we've, we've sort of got the hang of it now and actually programming it isn't really that big of an issue. Oh, okay, so three um, by three paths you mean it's got, can you explain what the three paths are? Yeah, so you've got head one that's up with the turning tools right, okay. and some power drivens, and then you've got head two, pretty standard, you know, and then we've got the turret down here, which has multiple tool capacities on it. Um, you can have power driven, you can have turning tools, and you can have normal drills on it. So this, this it looks like a fixed head turret, this one here. Yeah. So it's, it's, this is completely different to any star I've seen before. And even the size of it looks like a fixed head lathe as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're moving into obviously a very different type of lathe here. What can you do on this that you weren't able to do otherwise? So this allows us to use more turning on head two. So normally we wouldn't do anything on the other machines. What in would terms you just be doing on head two normally? Just drilling, really. On, like, I mean, you, you've got the capacity there to do more, but we've never really done more because there's not much point of it. It hasn't really ever saved as much time. Whereas this has opened up our eyes to a whole new world where we can do it a lot more from head two. Because you could turn on the back end yeah. as well. Yeah. Brilliant. So you've got your two spindles, you've got three heads. It seems like there's not much this can't do. No, no, there isn't. Um, when we actually went for training, we got sort of, it, it's one of them, if you can imagine it, it can do it. Right, okay, uh, but within a certain diameter. So yeah. what, what parts are you going to be looking to make on this that the company weren't making before? So we're trying to get into more shell bodies and sort of bigger, chunkier parts. Um, at the moment, we're, we're doing some quite difficult parts that are out of monol and inconel, so they're um, keeping us on our toes anyway. So could you explain what part you're making right now? This is a development job, yeah, right? Yeah, so it's um, a research development for a customer of ours. Um, it's never been done before, obviously, and that's out of monol. Um, it's got an 85 mil deep drill in it, which is would, be, would have been impossible for us to do on any of the other machines. Which brings us on to this size of this drill, so that's for an 85 mil a deep hole. Yeah. And monol, can you explain what monol is in, in terms of material? It's a bit like in Canel in terms of its nickel content. Um, it's actually machining a lot better than we thought it would, <laughs> to be I fair. I was going to say, I'm, I've never, I mean, I'm not a materials person, but I've never heard of monol in my yeah. life. Um, uh, we, I hadn't until it was coming here, and the research I've done, it's sort of a cross between stainless and Inconel. It's a, a medium ground between them anyway. That sounds like an absolute nightmare, rather you than me. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Definitely. Brilliant. So, so the parts you make as well, they are so unbelievably intricate, these connectors for, yeah. uh, for, for, connect for, for plugs and sockets, and they've got quite tight tolerances as well as having odd operations like an 85 mil yeah. hole, well, by, I guess it's a five mil drill or whatever it might be on the side well, of the lathe. This, this drill actually only has no six tolerance on it, which and only it's, it, for that depth is quite, quite tight really. Yeah. Um, and then there's other parts of it where you've only got all one or two tolerances on it as well, so yeah, we're we're definitely having to work hard at it. Brilliant, but you're making the machine work hard as oh, well? Oh yeah, yeah, obviously. Brilliant, so how have you found the SX38 overall? I've um, really enjoyed learning how to use it. Uh, definitely, it's had some squeaky bum moments, should we say. <laughs> I'm not sure we can say that, but okay, at least you didn't say something else. Yeah. That's all right. Where, you know, you, you're starting to use head one and head three at the same time, roughing and finishing. Um, so yeah, you get quite close in and you're sort of, you get you get used to it, but it is a bit a bit scary at first. I mean, so you're you're roughing and finishing on on the the first spindle. Yeah. while I guess you can do a drilling operation on the second. Yeah. So this for me, it screams the ultimate in in one hit machining yeah. and automated machining with the bar feeder as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, 
I mean, we've not had the work for it where it can run at the moment, which is what we're aiming to get in. But once we've got it, it'll just keep itself going and it'll be fantastic. It's, it really is a good machine. I love it. <laughs>